Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in angels? Do you believe that they are able to appear at times and even warn you of danger that's coming? Well, we have a friend with us today, a lady who is a missionary in Mexico, but she helps people. She helps young girls to get off the street. She helps orphans, and she's been doing this for a long time. And she's in the process of, of course, building a beautiful building there. And uh, that needs to be completed because the need is so great. But we were uh, sharing the other day, Pam and I and some of her friends, and she were, were sharing together. And she began to tell me these amazing protection stories. So I said, we've got to tape a few of these stories to show how God can protect people, warn them in the time of danger. So I'm going to ask her to look in that camera, introduce herself, and she can just, you just start talking however you want to. Amen. Okay. Well, thank you, Perry, for having me. Uh, it's been a wonderful journey in Mexico. And as we traveled and, and worked with these girls, we've had uh, many times that angels and uh, messengers have come to us and protect us from danger. And uh, there's been many times when I didn't know where to turn that God has uh, used this uh, mm. with with my husband and I. So we were, once I was down in uh, Puerto Vallarta and I was doing some work down there and I had adopted four children from this lady. Uh, I'd had them for 13 years and we hadn't seen the mother since they were three and six years mm. old. And so uh, I was, I woke up one morning, it was about three and a, three o'clock in the morning and I was awakened by a man that was sitting next to my bed and the man had long blonde hair and it was really curly and he was weeping. Uh, he was weeping and just bending his head over and just crying and crying and he took a book out and he put it on my bed and he leaned over my bed and continued to weep. And he, he, he was hitting the book with his hand. He's trying to get your attention, right? He was trying to get my attention. So I picked up the book and I was just awake as I'm sitting here right now. And so I picked up the book and there were children's drawings in it. And so I knew he was trying to tell me something about children. And so I looked at him and in my spirit, I knew who he was. <laughs> so I said, David. So you had never met him? Never. And he just shows up, yes. but you knew his name by I the Lord. I knew his name. By the Lord. By the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And so I looked at him, I said, David, why are you here? And so he uh, points over to the book again. And uh, I, so I was looking through the book and I turned around and he was gone. And it was only a, an hour and a half or two hours. I received a phone call that the mother of the four children that I uh, that I had adopted had died. She had, she was 38 years old. She had gangrene of the leg. She mm. was put out on the street. Um, uh, she had broken her leg and her, and some man had put her out on the street with her other three children. We didn't even know she had. Oh. And so, um, Later, as I reflected back on what happened there, I, I always know that God is going to explain things either now or later. Mm -hmm. So later, um, about a month later, this, uh, this lady came to my house and said, uh, we have found three more children of this, the mother of the children you adopted. And I had even asked called the family when the mother died. I asked them if there were any more children, they, and they said no. They didn't and even know about it. No. And so they showed up before Christmas, and they oh, had two more little girls, and they were age five and seven at that time, and then a, an 11-year-old boy. So I, I, I felt like the Holy Spirit was 
uh, telling me after this that this messenger that came to me yeah. wanted me to know there were more children from this woman, oh and this woman wanted Ooh. me to take them and care for oh them. Oh my! So now the children are reunited. So she and, knew um, that you she you had her other children. You had taken them, adopted them. Mm -hmm. But she also knew that she had these, and she's going to. She's died, right? Well, or, or um, she was missing, or something. What happened to the mother? The mother ha was in prostitution many years, mm, wow. and um, she had been living off and on with uh, one of the children's fathers. And uh, this, the woman that brought the children to my house before Christmas was actually their aunt, but oh. she couldn't afford them. So, the, uh, so so here's the thing: the the man, the blonde haired man with long hair, was an angel. It was not yes, a human. It was not. But he's mm -hmm. weeping over these children, mm -hmm. knowing if somebody doesn't help them, well, their life will be completely destroyed. Well, Perry, at and that the, time, the father was sending them out in prostitution. Those children? Yes. So we believe that. And that's why the angel's weeping. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So these, these little ones were living in prostitution. I, th I feel like they had been crying out and, and the Lord oh. he heard them. And this oh. messenger uh, showed up wanting me to uh, find these children. And actually, they were brought to me. So do you still have them? Yes, I do. Really? Yes. yes. It's a whole family? Yes. Now, again, uh -huh. if you don't know what I said earlier, she has a, an orphanage and she's building this fabulous facility, mm -hmm. but she can't get it completed. I'm going to say it. I'm going to rebuke some churches because she goes to churches who say, oh, we've cut off our missions. We don't support orphans anymore. Are you kidding me? I mean, the very... P Jesus said, if, if, if you offend a little one, tie a millstone around your neck and go jump in the lake. So we started helping her because I said, I want their blessing. There's this huge blessing in supporting true people who are doing this kind of work. I said, forget those churches. Let them do what they want to do. You know, they'll answer to God. I'll take the blessing for helping these kids. You know, that's how I feel. Um, I, you, got, you told me one about one came in and it, this again was not mm -hmm. a human. Right. This, was a, this was a messenger from God yes. and told you to get out. Yeah, you got to you got to tell that because that one was like blowing my mind when I heard that. Well, I was in uh, and I won't name the city, but I was in a city that was not in my where we live. And I was there looking for property and I was promised uh, that the government would give me a total of four acres and it was connected to the city and for me to stay there and I and wait for get the paperwork done and things like that. Um, the governor even came and, and spoke with me and because he did want this orphanage built there. Um, but the longer I stayed, uh, there were other people started wanting that property. Mm. So they decided to for less trouble and, and less problems to give it to these other people that were... Um, actually criminals and oh, so my. they ended up giving our property to the someone else and so I had gone to speak to uh, some of the people in charge of social services there about this property and they said you might as well go home uh, we are having to give this property over to someone else and so I was very frustrated I had spent a lot of time four months in that city and I, I went back to my apartment and I laid on the bed and I, and I was just, I was very uh, frustrated. I cried. I mean, this is a lot of work to go into another country and, and get um, unfulfilled promises. Mm -hmm. and, and that happened a lot. And so I went back and I was frustrated and I prayed. I said, Lord, I don't know what else to do now. Where am I to go? I, I thought I almost had a place for, to build my building. And so I, I fell asleep on my bed and I was sleeping uh, on my stomach. And uh, all of a sudden I had a vision and it was a man uh, dressed in regular clothing with a backpack. And so he can, he comes into the room and I turned over and looked at him and he just, he threw the backpack down on the bed and it made the bed bounce. And he said, leave. 
And that's all he said, but it was so powerful. I knew right then I needed to get up out of the bed and leave. My eyes, I believe, were also open because as I was getting all my things together to leave, I noticed that there were bullet holes in the walls of my uh, apartment. There was a bullet wall in the door that I really didn't recognize before, but also in the closet doors in my room. And I also looked over in the corner. I saw uh, there was some blood there. So something had happened in that apartment. So in other apartment. words, you, it, you didn't actually, that didn't happen. But you saw in the spirit all this happening. No, it actually happened. Oh, it had happened. That actually happened. Oh, I, oh. And so I wow. got all my things together, got in the van and took off. And I called someone I met on an airplane and I said, I don't know what to do now. And they said, well, why don't you come to Chapala? And so what so, happened to the guy? He's just gone then. Uh, I mean, he just yes, kind of disappeared. He, he just disappeared. But on my... Uh, in my journey back to this other city, um, that night I received a building that I w uh, was able to, the city let me have and remodel, and I, I end up, ended up moving in there. Mm -hmm. But what happened also is that, um, so it was, it was twofold. One, I got the building I, uh, that night that I started in. And number two, the next day where I was staying, uh, the cartel came in. They had been, they were fighting uh, over turf wars. Uh, they had, I had been going to see different ministries and there was one called Victory Ministries and they had a car wash and they had people, uh, men li uh, working there that had been in drugs and they were being rehabbed. Mm. They went in and they shot and killed every one <gasps> of them. Whoa. Uh, so that place I was going to about twice a week at the mall where I was going in, they went in and, and shot some people. They had an, an all and out war um, where they were skinning people alive and they were cutting heads off. And oh. so I also feel like he got me out of that place right before this oh. hit. Whoa. So an angel, right before, and, and, and it, the day I, before. There's no question about it. It's an angel. It's not yes. a human. He comes and tells you, get out now. Mm -hmm. And the next, that, the next day, mm -hmm. they come happened. in and start slaughtering people. And yes. you'd have probably been in the middle of it. You may yeah. have been over at that building. Yeah, I could have oh. been because I was going over there speaking to the uh, leader of this ministry who was helping a lot of uh, mm. drug addicts. Right. And, um, and I was asking him for advice on... Uh, living in that city, uh, getting properties, how, how I could do that in my ministry name. So I could have been there. And I just feel like uh, when I actually after I when I got in my car and I was leaving, I saw that there were uh, men with machine guns on the road in front of me. And on top of the hospital, uh, there were some more men. And I was uh, I was living next door to a hospital. So I just really believe it was a, a, a plan of protection for mm, me definitely. that God sent that uh, messenger. Um, one more thing in line with this, but I want people to hear. You had a building sometime back and the owner who didn't even like the kids being there mm -hmm. said, you got to leave. Remember, you? Mm -hmm. now this would have been... It's been several years ago when yes. it started. Um, and, and, and anyway, you called me and said, mm -hmm. can you help us with the building? Because we're, we're in an emergency. We're getting, I've got mm -hmm. all these kids. Mm -hmm. They have nowhere to go. We're getting mm -hmm. kicked out of the building. And I mm -hmm. told you, that man, I don't, I don't care what his name is or what mm -hmm. he does, God's going to kill him. <laughs> yes. I didn't say did. the Lord will take his life. I said, God will kill him for messing with orphans. Yes. Did I not? Yes. And I told you, you mm -hmm. go tell him. A preacher said yes. that if he messes with the mm -hmm. orphanage and with the orphans, mm -hmm. God will kill him. Uh, what had, tell a little bit about that. Well, first of all, we have had to move over seven times because of different reasons. Uh, uh, and so we were in this one place where on one side of the uh, of the property, 
we had two buildings and we had 24 girls and uh, we had a dining hall. On the other side of the property was a, a motel and in the middle was a soccer field. And the road that came up into this area uh, went two ways uh, to the left and to the right. So there was an actual business up there. Well, we had built a, a, a small building for some of our, uh, for our children on it. And when I got it finished, uh, this, uh, this guy started threatening to um, close the gates, lock us in, not out really, hmm. to lock us in where we couldn't get out, turn off our electricity. He did turn off our water. Uh, and he was wanting us to leave. How Why? many kids did you have then? We had about 28. In that building? Yes. So he don't care about the kids. No. He don't care what happens to no. him. He wants mm -hmm. money. He He's wants greedy. money. He's an they old wanted greedy to man. Sell the, they wanted to sell that property, which later they found out he didn't even own the property. So he was just really just wanting us off. He wanted to... Um, sell Jesus. that property in some way where he could get uh, even more money because we had done a lot of repairs on his buildings and things, and we had been there about two and a half years. And so he was constantly uh, threatening me and threatening to take away uh, our place to stay. So uh, about a few, I had talked to you about it, and so I ended up moving out and moving to another place because no matter what uh, was going on, um, I didn't feel safe anymore. I didn't know if he would let other people in there uh, to harm me or whatever. So we moved. We moved out, and you know that. And we told you, we told you about that. And uh, within a few months, he was on an airplane, and he had a huge heart attack. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they had to land the plane. Um, I did see him once after that. I didn't know he had moved off the first property. Uh, and so we moved in a building, another building, and it ended up being next door to this man. Mm -hmm. So here we were next mm -hmm. door to him again. And so uh, it was a small thing, Perry. We had, uh, they had gotten some sand. They were repairing stuff on their property next door. And he came over angry, trying to say we were stealing his sand. And I said, there's no reason for us to steal your sand. And he started threatening me again. And that night he uh, was at home. His wife said he sat up in bed and fell over dead. I told you he would. Yes, he did. Because the Lord <laughs> told me he would. Yes. The Lord said that man cannot mess with these kids uh -huh. who are the heart of children. Uh -huh. We've discussed this. Not everybody to hear this. When you have widows, and she's a widow, by the way, but when you have widows and you have children who are orphans, and that's who she cares for, you have the absolute heart of God at the top. God loves the poor. He loves, he loves those in need, but he really loves widows. And you cannot read the Bible. God put curses on people in the Old Testament mm -hmm. for, for messing with widows mm -hmm. and abusing them financially. He, he got after the Pharisees, Jesus did. He said, you will have greater damnation in hell because of how you're doing people. And I knew, and, and so let me flip this around and say, her stories will, will show you just these two messengers. We call them messengers of God. They're actually angels that have come to her. And this is just a few of the stories that have protected her and guided mm -hmm. her steps. That's it right. shows you that Almighty God is into people who the, 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 the widows and the fatherless. That's what I keep hearing. And here's the verse. When I took this verse, and most people don't know this about our ministry, but we have a, I have a Samaritan fund. And if it's a non-designated donation, and it can be used for anything, I tithe to the ministry in a fund that helps the people, like these situations we're talking about. It's called Samaritan Fund. And the reason I did it is because I read a verse sitting, sitting there. Mm -hmm. He that pities the poor lends unto the Lord. The Lord will repay him in his day of trouble. You cannot go wrong. You plant, you plant for your future. You plant for your own help. And I don't want to go into the miracles that start happening since we started doing that. But, but I cannot understand for the life of me, churches that's got all this income, all these wealthy people, all these people that can do it, 
who do not step in to say, if you want God's favor on your life, you can talk about all these things you can do you want, but when you start saying, I'm going to help these kids who have nobody or people that are doing the help for these, you get into a level of favor with the Lord. I'm just telling folks mm -hmm. that I've never, ever experienced in my life. Every time we've ever done something, we get strange breakthroughs. We get discounts on stuff that we shouldn't have got for ministry, not personally, but ministry. So I want to say that She's involved in building this beautiful facility. And there may be people who want to support her. And we can put up an address where you could contact her. But anyone that does it through our ministry and marks it, it there's only one we support, okay, really. The orphanage in Mexico. I will see to it that 100% goes to her, to what she's doing. In fact, we've been supporting you for how many years Six now? years. Six years. Mm -hmm. Every month, mm -hmm. and it does, does. Does the checks get there? Yes. Does all of it come yeah. that we promised? Yes. Okay. I want people to know. <laughs> yes. Harry Stone's going to keep his word. If there's one thing I'm not going to die lost over, it's taking something that that we've said we're going to do and not doing it. I'm going to be a person of my word and do what we tell people we're going to do. So I wanted you to hear these stories because they are absolutely phenomenal. Amen. I have something very exciting for you, and I want you to give me your undivided attention. Did you know that the entire code of the Battle of Armageddon is concealed in the story of Gideon in the Old Testament? Did you also know that in the story of Purim and Queen Esther, that the entire tribulation code of what will happen in the tribulation is concealed in that story, in your Bible? What about the Exodus code? There is more to the Exodus than you simply read. When you examine the prophetic code that's concealed in the book of Exodus and the Exodus of the children of Israel to the promised land, it's stunning. You've probably heard people talk about the word Maranatha, the Lord cometh. Did you know there is a code in the story of Maranatha, the word that is found in the scripture? I'm going to also tell you about end time secrets that are concealed in the parables of Jesus. Many of Christ's parables are about the time of the end and his return, and yet some of them never get preached. What about the stunning and amazing Israeli American cipher? Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about an audio CD album of six live sermons that deal with the six greatest codes of the Bible. If you know Perry Stone's ministry, you know one thing. I love mysteries. I love biblical codes. I love studying from the Hebrew perspective. And this is an overdose and an overload of information that is absolutely incredible of how the Old Testament stories conceal the future. It can even tell you things that's going to happen concealed in the story. I want to make this six audio CD album available to everybody watching right now. And here's how you get it. The Offer number is 6CD-108. And for $30 or more, you can request Breaking Prophetic Codes, this powerful six audio CD album. Now, here's how you order. You can order by calling 1-888-21-BREAD, which is a toll-free number, or you can go to perrystone.org and order online, or write me at Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and enclose a check for a donation of $30 or more. And don't forget to request the offer. This is a great offer. If you love prophecy, you're going to overdose on this. You're going to listen to these over and over because there are mysteries that we're going to unlock in the codes of the Old Testament stories that conceal the future. But don't forget this. You can also purchase digital downloads at perrystone.org. So we want to hear from you today. Order this right now because it's a now word on prophecy. God bless you. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.